Global weather patterns are regulated by ocean currents, but warming water is causing those currents to change. This is one of a handful of Earth system tipping elements that climate experts fear could set off incomprehensible devastation. We explored this danger in my in-depth conversation with the climate expert, Dr. Jennifer Francis. Um, I'm sure most people have heard about the ocean conveyor belt, which is basically the system of ocean currents that flow all around the world's oceans. There are two places really that, that push that current to flow. One of them is in the North Atlantic. And the idea here is that when fall and winter come along, the ocean surface waters um, get cold and they freeze. And when they freeze, they eject the salt out of the water. And that heavy, salty, cold water that comes out of that freezing process is very heavy relative to the other water in the area and so it sinks really rapidly and it creates this downward flow of water which then basically turns south and starts heading towards the southern Atlantic and meets up with uh, other currents along the way and another area where this happens is off the coast of, of Antarctica where it, also you get some very cold air temperatures and ocean water freezing. So the concern is that in the area around Greenland, the water has been becoming fresher, partly because of the water that's being melted from the Greenland ice sheet. Over the past few days, we've seen a significant amount of actually liquid water on the surface that have both accumulated in small ponds and probably approaching the size of lakes, especially near the edge of the ice sheet. An interesting thing is that the melt season actually in Greenland started pretty much end of April, beginning of May, which in the grand scheme of things is very close to a month earlier than, than average. My name is Brooke Medley. I'm the Deputy Project Scientist for Operation Icebridge. Uh, last April and May, we were actually flying in Greenland out of Kangerlooswak on the NASA P3. This was somewhat of a unique year where we, we expected to be going early enough where we would see the typical um, dry snow conditions, but rather we were met um, with a much different scenario where we saw all these uh, spectacular blue ponds of, of beautiful liquid water just uh, pooling on top of the surface. The ice sheet is actually experiencing almost an additional month of melt because it started so early here. Part of it is actually driven by the fact that it's very warm right now, but also that there was not a lot of snowfall last winter. And so what that means is um, when the, the snow does melt, it very quickly exposes darker ice, which can then melt even faster. Just a significant increase in the total amount of water that we, we just see in general. Over the course of 2019, uh, there was so much melt that it actually ended up being the second largest uh, meltwater production year for the Greenland ice sheet since 1980. It's actually quite simple. The longer your melt season, that means you can just have more time to accumulate more melt. And the only place for this water to go is into the oceans. Also, there's more fresh water flowing from rivers into the Arctic Ocean that fresher water then comes out into the North Atlantic uh, in that passage between Europe and Greenland there. And so we're finding this area of fresher than normal water just south of Greenland. And the reason it's looking colder than average there is because when that fresh water is sitting there, it helps, it floats, because fresh water is lighter than the salt water. It sits on top and it prevents that freezing process and that that creation of that very salty, dense water from happening. It slows it down anyway. You can see that the, on the map, that's the most contrasting, rapidly contrasting color area. Exactly. It's very clear. Yes, it is. And it even, even has a name, it's called the cold blob. <laughs> the cold blob. <laughs> yes, it's a very technical term. Because it just sits. Yeah, it's been there for several years. Um, hmm. And it's a very uh, interesting area. A lot of people are studying it because not only does it have this effect on the ocean circulation, but it also is causing weather patterns to change in the North Atlantic and in Europe. Because whenever you change 
temperature patterns in the ocean or on land, you affect winds. Mm. And when you affect winds, you affect weather. The water moving through the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation flows at a rate of 20 million cubic meters per second. Studies show that since the 1950s, this rate has slowed by 15%. That 3 million cubic meters per second loss is equivalent to three times the flow rate of all the rivers in the world. If this already massive decrease continues, which seems likely, and the AMOC stalls completely, it would disrupt the entire climate system. And we know this because it's happened before. Past changes in Atlantic overturning have caused some of the strongest and most rapid climate shifts, such as a southward shift of the tropical rainfall belt and warming of the Southern Ocean and Antarctica. The last 11,000 years that since the Ice Age, this our interglacial period has been unreasonably stable. And we don't know why. With an enhanced greenhouse effect from uh, burning of fossil fuel, CO2 and methane and so on, you would have a gradual increase in temperature. That's what all the models show you. It's sort of a gradual increase in temperature. But that's assuming that the climate plays nice. And we actually know from the ice cores that the climate does not play nice all the time. We have tons of examples of climate changes where we see complete reorganization of the atmospheric circulation from one year to the next. And that will be extremely hurtful for any agricultural activity in the world because the weather will change and will not change back. What we know from the sudden climate changes in the past is that these abrupt changes represent a reconfiguration of the entire atmospheric pattern. What if, with the emission of greenhouse gases, that we trigger a situation when this system all of a sudden goes into a feedback? If you reconfigure the transport patterns of high pressures and low pressure systems over North America and, for instance, Europe, but particularly North America and the Midwest, and all of a sudden it stops to rain, and it hits the Midwest and the US and it leads to massive crop failure. That's going to impact the entire world. We don't know. We don't know where the threshold is. But we are rats inside the experiment. You can support the Climate Change Solutions Show and unlock every full episode through the link below. The small membership fee also gives you access to my research links so you can easily learn much more. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Bryce Plank.